When you go to the Louvre, you go to see the Mona Lisa. When you go to the MoMA, you cannot miss Van Gogh's Starry Night. Even though I've been covering Rebel's oil paints and they're fantastic, when you buy Rebel, when you buy Rebel 4, you come for the watercolors. And this is my review of watercolors with Rebel 4. Let me just get this out of the way. I'm an oil painter and when I digital paint, I think like an oil painter. I paint like an oil painter. I want my brushes to move and, and chunk and blend the way an oil painter knows that they should. So here I am painting with a, C a piece of software that's famous for its watercolor. So I would be a fool not to play around with the watercolors. So here I am playing around with a, you know, a, a software simulation that's definitely out of my comfort zone. But just look at what's happening here. Look at the way that the paint bleeds and pools. Look at the way that the fluid dynamics, and I've accelerated the video here so you can really see it exaggerated. The fluid dynamics work in real time. So as you make a stroke, things expand out based on the amount of water that you have in your brush. They blend even, even something that you've put down in a dry brush fashion has um, the ability for those edges to soften as you lay in more color. Here I am playing with inks and watercolor and acrylic all together, just seeing what happens, you know. And wonderfully, digital painting, unlike traditional painting, you can do whatever you want with mixed media and nothing repels, you know, the other mediums. It just works. So you have a lot of range, a lot of possibility, a lot of exploration. When I started this review, I I didn't even know what I wanted to say. For me, it's it's not so premeditated. For me, it's experiential. What I have to do is just open up the tool and start playing. And that portrait I did there that you saw is that's what happened. I just picked it up and started playing around and I thought, well, it's time. It's time to do this review. So here's kind of a review slash demo slash me just kind of thinking aloud. When I paint in watercolor or when I paint in oils, I think about putting in the darks first. I want the bones of the painting down as quickly as possible. I know that's a different way of working. A lot of times people working in watercolor say, you know, put down lighter values, like work back to front, work light to dark and so on. But I can't help myself. I have to paint like I, <laughs> I kind of have to paint like an oil painter. So I kind of paint darks, darks in first. And certainly that gets me into trouble occasionally. But if, um, if I wanted to be careful, I would pre-draw it and, uh, and just, but I'd probably still just go for it. So in this case, um, I picked an image that was kind of high key in the sense that um, whoever edited this photo kind of put a fade across the whole image so that there's not truly blacks or super dark darks. Although there are darks in the image, you know, it's missing that kind of final step into the true black darks. And I thought that would be a nice, sort of softball way for me to approach watercolor here since um, I could kind of, I, I don't know, I could kind of cheese my way into it a little bit. And um, what I found is that in this particular painting, I was using more of the Sumi brushes and a little bit of the watercolor brushes and a little bit of the inks as well. And I really wanted to explore how the layering worked. I wanted to explore how to create, how to get saturation, how to play with different amounts of water and just see, you know, what, what could happen here? What kind of brushes are pre-built? You know, what kind of things are just out of the box going to work with how I know painting works? And, and I'm, even though I, you know, I say I'm not a watercolorist, I know how to watercolor and I do watercolor. I have, you know, a few good sets of really nice watercolors and occasionally I'll work in watercolors for a client or I'll just do it for my own my own enjoyment or sometimes I use it as my travel kit. Um, I definitely did watercolor across Italy uh, one summer and uh, just just really and I like it but I, I definitely would prefer to have oils or or even you know Golden's um, what are they called open acrylics. Golden those open acrylics are awesome but this is a watercolor review and what I can say is it works like real watercolor. I think the, you know, when I first spoke about Rebel 4, I, I thought it was, 
I thought it was so over the top that it must be using my graphics card to get all these great effects, but but it doesn't. It just it just does all of this on the CPU, and I'm not quite sure how they pull this off, but it's it's almost magical. Um, the way that when you lay the color down, the pigment just saturates into the tooth of the paper. It um, it it blends like it's never really set. You know, you can work wet over a dry and it, it kind of picks up and mixes with what's down um, it has you know you can paint just straight paint on canvas you can straight paint uh, whereas there's a subtle blend you can paint where it's half and half blend and, and add additive of new pigment you can have it set to just a blender so you can effectively like kind of like have your brush like slightly it's like having a slightly wetted brush and just kind of bristling over already laid down paint and then you can also use your brush whatever brush you have selected as an eraser so it's like real watercolor but it's you know it's better it's easier just like digital is you know you can you have more room to roam more flexibility more control z when you make a mistake so it's it's very very fun um i i wanted in this review not to paint you know one particular uh, finished image, but just to dance around with a bunch of different different tools because I felt like it might it might serve different artists to see what you know a little bit different looks this tool can have or this software can have and um, you know if you're looking at this already and you're not convinced that these aren't like best in class watercolors then I don't know what to tell you because they really are it's just this is the the hallmark, the keystone, the signature feature of Rebel. And it's been this fluid dynamics, beautiful, realistic watercolors. And they've, they've been able to do this for a long time. So um, the fact that it's even better in Rebel 4 is, you know, is, is amazing. So uh, I'm not really a very experienced Rebel painter. And I didn't go do my homework and see what particular features were updated between three and four and why this is better and why it's you know whatever but to me it feels like um the way that like the brush engine or the way that the blending and the wet media and all that stuff it just seems to work better more efficiently the blending is better the um all of the fluid dynamics are great and i just honestly think the only thing that they could do to make this better would just be to keep uh, making it have better and better performance so it could run on like lighter and lighter weight soft or uh, hardware so you know just a, a even a basic laptop could run it or whatever I think that's like the only room to improve because I think the performance of the brush on the canvas the virtual brush on the virtual canvas is there's no complaint it's fantastic okay so let's try something a little bit different with this image um I'm just going to do some figures in, in a landscape, uh, this, this little water scene. And what I'm focusing in on again is just the darker shapes, those dark values. And um, I, I really like painting uh, with this attentiveness to the negative space so that I'm just looking for dark chunks of dark and just looking for a wall of white space between and kind of measuring with my eye the balance of those spaces. And yeah, I definitely will make mistakes and, and stuff there, but um, I, I really enjoy working that way um, as opposed to just working with like a lay-in with pencil or pen or something. It's very fun for me. It just keeps, it makes me work a little harder, you know? And so um, if I make a mistake, who cares? It's okay, you know? Uh, it's just very fun. So with this, I just wanted to see how well I could like kind of simply and easily make this look halfway decent. And knowing that, um, you know, if, if I'm like you, if, if, if you've never picked up this software before, how easy is it going to be to just pick up and play? And what I'm finding is with a little tinkering, and you do want to be a little bit of a tinkerer, you know, you want to be able to say, well, what happens if I push this button or that button? What if I slide the water all the way down to zero? What happens if I um, use the more of the blending brush as opposed to just the, the, the brush that just applies paint? And all those little brushes are right underneath the sliders for opacity and water and stuff. Um, and, and you can just kind of tinker with it. You're not going to break anything, you know. So just, just tinker and play and see what happens. But um, what I found was that 
it works really well. It works well for, you know, that figurative piece prior that I just showed you before. It works great for portraiture, like I started out with. It works great for this more of like a landscape scene. Um, and certainly, I'm not very efficient with this tool yet because I want to work with it in the way that I would, would work with it in oil paints. And I'm still learning how much of the, the bleed to let happen and how much of the the wetness and how is it how to control that and how then to get a hard edge and there's a lot of things that I haven't figured out you know um, I've been painting in art rage for like oh feels like a decade right so with that with that tool I know like every nuance I want to do this that and the other and I just know exactly what to do with the brushes with the canvas with the lighting with everything um, this tool is newer for me so I'm putting in the time right now to learn it and I'm putting in the time. Just look at that. Look at the water blending. It's so cool. Um, oh, no, no, no. Check this out. So here I put down a mark with just very little water just to show you. Like here's like effectively like dry brushing with watercolor. And now I'm going to take that same tool and I'm just going to add more water. Now look at the difference. This is how you can control your edge with this software. You get your soft edges, that bleed and that kind of. Um, desaturation when you add more water and you pull that water out of it and it it stays darker you get more of the tooth of the paper it kind of the, the 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 stroke will kind of pick up only on the highest parts of the canvas and then you can work back into it and soften your edges and that's you know that's the lesson here is that there's so much like subtlety that you can you can accomplish once you kind of get the hang of it so for me it's not so formulaic it's like I said it's experiential so what I need to do I could sit down and like kind of make my notes and kind of figure it all out but what I'd rather do I'd rather just enjoy myself right when I paint I don't want to be highly analytical I want to be sort of like in a flow state so um, what I like to do is give myself a lot of little objectives like oh, I'm gonna paint a pear I'm gonna paint an apple I'm gonna paint this guy standing on a boat I'm gonna paint a portrait or whatever and in each each one of those paintings I might give myself a specific challenge like I'm gonna use this paper I'm gonna use these brushes I'm gonna try this strategy and I'll go through and do a bunch of quick studies like that just like you see here and while I'm doing that I'm learning all kinds of things like oh well if I push F on the keyboard it freezes it freezes the the bleed of the paint. Well, I'm, why am I having to do that all the time? Why don't I just take some of the water out of the brush so I don't have to freeze the bleed all the time? I want it to bleed less, you know? And then I kind of find my rhythm, like, oh, I'd rather have the water set at seven instead of 20, or I'd rather have um, the tilt of the canvas set at almost zero instead of, you know, tilted way down because I don't want those big drips to happen in this particular painting or whatever. And drips can happen, you know, with this software, if you have your canvas tilt, set to be very very steep you can have realistic drips and and pooling and all kinds of things that'll just blow your mind but it also is a little bit more to control so as i was kind of thinking about this for a demo i was thinking well let me just demo a bunch of different strategies and here one of the things i was trying was blending how does blending work so i set my tool to blend and was just smudging everything all over the place and of course it's looking muddy and bland and i'm losing all my edges but hey, you know, it's it's a demo. Who cares? You just practice, you know? So I was learning how things work. So here I am using the blending again. Erase, blend, erase, blend. These are things you really can't do in the same way with real watercolor. But why limit yourself? Think about, you know, what you want to accomplish and see how the tool can help you get there. So um, here's, you know, a, and this is never a painting I'm going to turn into something for the gallery. This is just me dinking around and learning. And um, I thought it was really fun. I thought, you know, wow, this is this is fascinating. And one of many fascinating explorations I've had over this last week. And in, the, in addition to this, there's gouache. I mean, gouache is so cool. And, and it has a very gouache-like feel where, where it still, it looks like opaque watercolor. So guys, between the sumi, the gouache, the real watercolors, this is the most realistic, most comprehensively perfect simulation of watercolor in digital media that I could even dream of. I mean, they've knocked it out of the park. So I'm going to go do some more paintings and hopefully um, see you online. Thank you so much and thank you for all your support. I would give this a 10 out of 10. No question. Take care. Thank you.